All right, y'all, we up for a treat. We got my man, Jesse Lee Peterson, talking to somebody that he is going to make leave the show again. We have not seen this video. I was waiting. I was saving this video to watch with you all. So hopefully you watch with me and you um, you help me with some things in the comments below. All right? Make sure y'all engage. I'm going to need a couple of captains to, to steer the ship. <laughs> but yeah, this drink right here, I already know it's going to be immaculate. And I um, and already know that the reason why this gentleman walks off is not going to be Jesse Lee Peterson's fault because he's always so laid back and chill that i don't get it man people are so damn sensitive bro they really are but anyway thank you to everyone who have purchased hats and anyone else who want to purchase one feel free to go to the link below hatsforsale.com lfr10 is the code that you want to put in for 10 percent off and you will receive free shipping all across the country man i think we sold more than 60 hats so far yeah yeah i'm excited okay let's check this out and see what got this guy so upset that he rolled out that's funny which i find that to be very interesting yeah that is one of the reasons that black men leave or don't date black women especially here or big cities is because black women are like now <laughs> this brother does not wait to get to the sugar honey iced tea man he said because black women are bees. Okay, let's get more context. Let's get more context. What? Yeah, and, and, and the men don't know how to deal with that because mm -hmm. they never dealt with their mothers in the right way. Mm -hmm. And now these black women are becoming educated, and the more educated they are, the more of a bitch they become. Oh, my goodness. And the guys just don't want to be bothered with that. Have you noticed that? No, not necessarily. I feel like the You more... haven't noticed that they become No, I feel like the more educated they become, the, the more, more... They are. <laughs> no, the more value to me, the more valuable they are in the relationship. In what way? They become extremely demanding. They they become um, um, very argumentative. They become um, um, they they already are not. And I'm not talking about only black women because I don't know. Um, but I'm talking about women in general. But um, when they start to get a little bit of power, they start to feel that power, and they start to feel like they don't need a man for anything. And so the man does not give them what they what they want and it becomes an issue and so yeah if you want to say they're acting like a, a female dog then some will say that you're right and some will say what you're wrong they can add to the household and yeah. hell more hell <laughs> are you are you married no i see why <laughs> <laughs> i know because i've noticed that women with degrees don't make for good wives and good mothers that's what i always tell guys don't marry a woman with a degree. She's a you now. I would not advise that. Now, I, listen. I y'all know Jesse Lee Peterson is absolutely hilarious. He's phenomenal. But I challenge him on some things. My wife is extremely educated. She is the a black woman with the the first to say something, the first to pop slick, the first to say something. But you gotta be built a certain type of way. And I'm built a certain type of way. I wasn't as educated as her. I wasn't making as money as um, as much money as her. But I've always been a man who understood when she needed um, a certain um, a certain energy from me. But when I felt like she crossed the line, um, I would communicate that in my way. I would communicate that in my way. And and you still stay strong by what you believe in and whatnot. I should be a I should be a matchmaker. To be honest with you. Because that's the problem. It's not the women being female dogs. It's, it's the men being soft. Men not being willing to deal with a woman who want to get her little attitude off and be all emotional, and he can't do anything with her. That's, I think that's a man problem. I'm, I'm, that's, the, that's the position I take. I think it's a man problem, to be honest with you. You would tell somebody that? I tell them that all the time. I am completely 100% appalled, and I do not agree with that one bit. Why I feel not? Like, because I feel like a woman with a degree can add so much value to being a mother and being a wife. Because what can she add to the household? With that degree, she can add income. With that degree, she can add responsibility. With that degree, she can take some of those burdens off of your back and put those on her back. But That's true, but a lot of the attitude that comes along with it is not worth it, and a lot of guys understand. Um, and I know I'm not, hopefully I'm not being hypocritical from what I just now said or seem like I'm talking out both sides of my face, but the reason why a lot of men um, feel like they don't even want to deal with it too is because... For one, I think that they're not um, men enough to deal with a strong woman. 
that's that's number one um because you shouldn't have to check a woman or try to try to bring her down to size in order to be in order for her to be palatable at all but at the end of the day um the ratio of men to women is is crazy so a man don't feel like especially if he has something going on if he look if he look good if he um if he takes care of himself if he makes good money if he's um responsible and he has a, a total package that he feels is worth offering to a lady that's deserving um he'll give that but as soon as he, she starts to feed him certain energies certain um certain attitude and still don't want to do certain things that um that a, a woman's supposed to do for a man um he got way too many options he got way too many options and guess what he going to cut out he either going to cut out mentally or he just going to cut out physically and or he going to stay in it and just deal with as many women as he can on the side so that he can check all those other boxes that the one that he actually chose to build a life with have checked it's not the right thing to do but it's happening out here. Degree, i don't want her to take any of that off me mm -hmm. i want her to be my wife have my children watch over my children when i'm out providing mm -hmm. i want her to be a woman not to take anything away from me. So wait a minute, women don't, so in your mindset, women don't, shouldn't be educated? Right. What about your daughter, what about daughters? What about? If they plan on becoming a wife and a mother, they shouldn't be educated. So they, but if they're never gonna get married, they just wanna, they gotta take care of themselves, I have no problem with that. But in order to be a good wife and a mother, they, because it builds their ego, and they start to feel like they are better than the male. What year are you in? It's 2021. These women are out here being mothers, wives, I know, that's judges, why lawyers. No, <laughs> a lot of them are Yeah, but the man is a beta. Beta. <laughs> <laughs> what is a beta man? <laughs> One that can't deal with a woman in the right way, his wife, or man. stay home and let the woman go to work, can't speak up for himself, and be an independent person, love what's right. And do the right thing. So do you think that men can't be stay-at-home fathers? Do you think that's something against that? Any man that's stay-at-home father is mm -hmm. a beta male. Really? He's, he's <laughs> a woman. Really? Yeah. That, you're not supposed to switch roles like that. Mm -hmm. That's abnormal. Why is that? Now that's it is abnormal. It's definitely abnormal. But I will say this, um, and I'm and I may be talking from 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 experience of taking on um certain duties that a woman usually have. Um when I got my when I got my wife pregnant at the age of 18 and I realized how intelligent she was, how studious she was and how much she wanted to finish her college education. Um, one thing that I decided, especially since I grew up with no father and no mother, um, that my children will have a father in the home. Not only will they have a father in the, father in the home, but um, I will make sure that they have everything that they need or want from me and their mom. So I decided to um, to not only work, but to take care of um, picking them up from daycare, cooking. Um, I even did my daughter's hair sometime. I learned how to plait. I learned how to like do little little braids and all that other stuff. And and honestly, that bonding was something that was necessary. My baby girl remember it. And um, and yeah, but it didn't stop me from um, making sure that I provided for the family while my wife continued her education. Because my thing was um, when you look at black families um they weren't sticking together too much and i made up in my mind i said look um and we had this discussion a long time ago i said uh, we're going to make this work but one thing that i need for you to do is finish your education because what if something happened with us what if i pass away um, prematurely what what if um we do end up separating divorcing or something like that i want you to be good and I need you to continue your education. I realize you work full time and um, and you're because she was working full time, too. But I said, this is something that's necessary. You started out doing your um, finish, um, with your college education and I want you to finish it and I'll do whatever I have to do to finish it. So I mean, for you to finish it. So she did. And she's she's better off for it. Thing is, people are not mature enough. And they're not adult enough to have these type of deals in their relationships. 
because we're so old school that we feel like, oh, a woman should just be barefoot at home, taking care of babies, breastfeeding the babies, cooking when I come home from work, and it should be a hot meal on the plate. I should eat first, and you should serve me, and blah, blah, blah. She still serves me. She take very, very good care of me. But because of my sacrifice earlier on, because of her sacrifices earlier on, we are good from it. But a lot of people don't have that discipline. A lot of people don't have that willingness to work together. And that's the problem. People are so far, so people are so hung up in, um, on their own desires and their own needs and wants that they're not even willing to bend so that they can have a, a better situation for the entire family. So I just have an issue with, with that part right there. But yeah, I, maybe I should teach a daggone class because you can do you can do both. You can, you can do both. And honestly, I think Jesse Lee Peterson will be much happier if he were married. No bull. It's abnormal if, if, if the wife is like a, a Supreme Court justice and she's, you know, the household is taken care of, but she needs somebody in there helping with the children and stuff like she that. She needs to be in there. It's a God-given role for her to be there. Really? Being a Christian, you agree to that, right? No, absolutely not. Why not? Because what about women pastors? I have several women. My aunt is one of my favorite pastors. <laughs> no. Don't tell her. <laughs> don't tell her. Don't say that out loud. Don't say that out women loud. Women can't be pastors? Uh-uh. Why? Because it's not in their nature to lead. Women were created to follow. Men wow. were created to lead. Wow. Have you noticed that? In 2021? Yeah, look how... You know what? If, if, if Jesse Peterson is speaking strictly by the book of the Bible, look, you got to give it to him. You got to give it to him. If he's speaking strictly by... Because we have changed the rules to, to work around our own schedules, to work around our own wants and desires. So he's absolutely telling the truth when it comes to the roles of men and women. If you're speaking strictly from a biblical standpoint, strictly from a biblical standpoint, but nobody is, is very, is how often do we come across somebody who's really living that biblical standpoint? Messed up everything. Anytime the woman takes over, the world goes to hell in a handbasket. Uh, what it, what, what Look happened? at the children, when the father leaves the home, the kids become basket cases that, because the mother doesn't have it in her to leave them. That, have you noticed that? Absolutely not. That, that absolutely not. When my dad left the household, my brothers and I are very successful men and do very well for ourselves. And my mother did a great job leading us into becoming great men. But having things doesn't make you a man. What make, having what doesn't make you a man? Things. Absolutely not. It's, it's the way you carry yourself. What, being what successful you, doesn't make you a man. It's the way you carry yourself. It's, it's the way you handle business. It's the way you, you, the world perceives you. It's the way that you perceive yourself. It's the energy that you give. There are several things that make you a man. No, it's also keeping this world going. It's also planting seeds. It's also uh, making sure that, you know, there's more people to keep, um, to keep society moving forward. I mean, you need to establish generations of you. So if you are a man, then that's part of that's part of the deal as well. I mean, a lot of people miss out on that. Again, we're picking and choosing the things that we want based off of what we want. And at some point we become too picky thinking that or oh, the world is our oyster because we've heard it so many times. You can be whatever you want to be. Yeah, you can, but we're keeping God out of the out of the conversation nowadays and we're just we're just switching things up. However it, however it best suits us. What makes you a man is to become, to return to the Father and become a son of God. That's what makes you a man. That doesn't stop. I know, but you're, you're, you're developing into a man and your character is based on the principles of God and nothing else. So you think that when you get to the gates of heaven, do you honestly think that God is going to say, you're not a man, you're not a man, you're not a man, you're not a man, get out? Absolutely. He's going to let you in. He won't have to say get out. He's not going to let you in. He won't open the gate. That's crazy. But, God, I started going to let me in. Do you hook up Christian people too, together? Absolutely. Everybody. Yeah. Muslims, everybody. Really? Yeah. Um, and they don't question the fact that you put two men together. What happens in a man's mind because you're an executive matchmaker, mm -hmm. right? What happens in a man's mind? I know that we all born in sin, mm -hmm. so we got this mess. in and up, right? We get into, as a result of being born in sin, we get into trying to find peace, mm -hmm. so we get into all kind of mess. And in the good old days, when boys were boys and men were men, it was an embarrassment 
to be in your mess. You would never promote it as good. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't tell anyone about it. You'd go to God to overcome it, right? What happened to men that they are taking their mess and promoting it as good? What what happened to a mindset like that? Look, what what are you what are you what are you saying is mess? Like when two men want to get together as a mm -hmm. husband and a wife, when two less lesbian want to get together as a husband and wife. That's not where mess. did the shame go that these people are promoting a sin? He's triggered. He is triggered. It's about to it's about to get popping. It's about to get popping. I hope y'all are still here because it's a, it's about to go. Is about to go forward. He's triggered. As though it's a good. Black people used to be embarrassed by that. White people used to be at one point. Where did the shame go? Where They're not embarrassed anymore. You think? Some are. Some mm -hmm. are not. Mm -hmm. But a lot are. So what, what I, th I think. I think we in we, the mindset of the male. What happened that they think it's okay to promote that? I think that we're in a time where you just mind your own business. Meaning and what? You, you focus on what makes you happy the love that makes you happy, the things that you want to do in life, and not worry about the next person. I think that that's where we are in life. Not worrying about who or what. I don't care who you sleep with. Right. I don't care who, you, who you're laying next to at night. I don't care. I know, but it's not about, it's not necessarily about what others think about it, right? Mm -hmm. In the good old days, it used to be about what the person thought about it. They knew that they were wrong, that they had an issue, right? Mm -hmm. And they would quietly overcome that issue rather than space. promoting it as a good. You know what? As long as the person is good, I think that's all that should matter. Do you recommend to your client that they have sex before marriage? I feel like as adults, um, I don't feel like nobody's came to me yet that's a virgin. Really? Um, so I feel like for me, I always promote getting to know the person before you engage in any type of sexual aspect. Because sex can complicate it will. a relationship. You don't really know who you're with. Once you have sex with them, you lose reality of who that person is. That's a possibility. And also, I feel like it can distract you from a lot of things if you have sex with somebody too yeah. prematurely. Have you ever matched up a couple mm -hmm. and they lasted? They, got, they dated, they got married. So and, we and have a couple right now that we matched that's been together about three and a half years. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, what age group you you normally deal with? Oh, wow. So from 25, my oldest client was 63. Whoa. Yeah. What the? Based, based out of New York. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with people that they can't find their own date? You I know, don't, I don't, I don't when know. I was growing up, <laughs> mm -hmm. getting, we didn't have computers and online and all that. Getting a date was nothing. Where did they lose that where they can't find their own date and they need someone else to do it for them? I don't think it's anything wrong with people. I think it's just the times that we're in. People are a lot more busier. There's a lot more going on. So people need a lot more help. You know, they get help. They get their groceries delivered. They get, you know, packages delivered. They don't have to go to the store. So why not make love as easy and accessible to them? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So they're busy today, so they don't have time to go Hang out and have fun and relax yeah. and just meet someone. Some people are just so career focused, you know, thinking about like, like for me, when I go to a grocery store, I'm not at the grocery store worrying about who next to me. I'm at the grocery store like to accomplish the goal of getting oh. groceries and going home. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I think a lot of people think that way. When they go somewhere, it's, they're not consciously thinking about who's around them and who they can oh, you know, fall in love with. It's that like, makes sense. Because when I was growing up, life was a little slower. So yes. You had time to reflect. Mm -hmm. You're not like just racing in your head trying to get it done. Mm -hmm. What um what are some of the nightmares of that you ran into putting people together? Uh, I think that some of the stumbling blocks um, that a lot of people. I like how Jesse um, Jesse Lee Peterson is um, he's he's slow walking them into like um, a serious part of the conversation that he wants to get them to. That's something that's. That's something that's dope. I need to learn how to do that so I can start interviewing people as well. Do you good. try to warn them in the van, hey, this person a little too far away. I would suggest you let me find somebody local for you. Yeah, so we talk about whether or not you can handle or deal with, you know, long distance dating because it's a big responsibility. Yeah, it is. You know, have you dated somebody long distance? Yeah, it's a mess. From where, where, from where to where? Here to New York. And it that's doesn't a big, work. Why didn't it work for y'all? I have time. And the women want a lot of attention. Yeah. You know how women are, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. They want the world to rotate around them. And why you didn't make the world rotate around them? Ain't that what you're supposed to do as a man? Uh-uh. Why? Because she, she was no longer my God. Mm -hmm. 
And so when women stop being your guy, you know, make the world rotate around you, you bring them into your world. I like that. Woman has to earn that. Woman has to earn that. Yeah, she definitely have to earn that. Same thing. She, you have to. She, um, um, you have to earn things from her as well. But definitely, if if you're gonna make some, if someone's gonna have that much of your time, then they have to earn that. This is no way. Is nothing else you can say about that. She one. wasn't the right one. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> So tell me, tell us, what, do you, what are some of the things you do to, to match people? Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the steps? So one of the first things we do is a questionnaire, a basic uh, consultation questionnaire, just asking you exactly who you are, what are you looking for, how can we be of service? After that, and you decide, you pick one of our packages, we more so mix life coaching with dating coaching. So we want to figure out, you know, what's going on with you? What are some issues with you that we can help you pan out so it can better your dating life? We don't just want to jump into the dating conversation. Oh, let's match you with somebody. It's more so like, what's going on with you? You know, how can we help you get your life in order so that when that perfect person comes, you're good, you're ready to go, your mind is right, your life is right, you're ready to date. Oh, I see. So you help deal with their issues too. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm can... a certified life coach as well. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you can get right. So when they do meet someone, they don't screw it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that women today are s and men are s makers. <laughs> Let's say I walked in your office and I'm saying, hey, Jay Lamar, I'm looking for a s Would you find me a s I don't even know what a s is. <laughs> do you know what a s maker is? What, no, what's a s maker? You never heard those terms? I've never heard those terms. A s He's heard the terms. He just he's he's trying to figure out where Jesse's coming from. Jesse's about to make it clear, and then he's gonna have to, you know, back back like because at first he said, you know, I'm about minding my own business. I'm I'm not concerned about who's in your bed or anything like that. I minds my own business. Well, he does help people find more than just love. He more than likely help people find the draws too, and by finding the draws, that's just finding somebody to have sex with. Is a woman that has sex with. A man before marriage? Mm -hmm. And what's okay. and a s maker is a man that has sex with a woman before marriage. Why are they s Why are they just not people who just <laughs> have sex? <laughs> because they're not married. And that makes them a s Yeah. Were you a s or are you a s I was a s maker, like not going on. Oh. Are you a s now? No. <laughs> I clean my house up. Okay. Are you a s maker? No. no. Were you ever a s maker? I don't even know what that is. I would never classify myself with using those terms. Why not? Because I'm not with those people. You were never a slut maker? I don't even know what that is. So you never had sex out of wedlock? I don't even know. You don't know if you had? Mm -mm. <laughs> Come on, bro. You've been disingenuous, man. See? See? You see? And this right here is what happens when someone's triggered. They're guarded, they're protected, and they don't want to say anything that's going to make them look bad. That's when you lose the conversation. As soon as he notices that, he pounces. And now it's going to be all, it's going to be all downhill for you, man, man. <laughs> Mm -mm. But how are you going to help somebody if you don't know you have? I, I, would, but, I would never use that term to describe anybody. So you don't judge, right? I don't. That's so if I different. came in your office and said, hey, Jay Lamar, I'm looking for a s you wouldn't judge me, right? I wouldn't even know what it is. That word doesn't exist in my vocabulary. But would you find me one? I don't even know what that is. I can't find it. But you if one. I told you what it, what it is, would you find me a s No. Why not? You're judging me. No, I don't know what that is. So I wouldn't I'll be able to find you that. I you want a woman that would have sex with awesome. more than one. Oh, well, you can go find that yourself, right? You wouldn't find me a s No, what? I'm finding people to fall in love with. What? I'm finding people, I'm finding people for you to fall in love with. So are you like selective in the kind of people that you help? Yeah, oh yeah, we have to be. And why is that? Because there are certain things, like when we do the consultations, if we see like there are certain issues that really are far beyond like life coaching issues or dating co coaching issues, we can refer you to like a therapist or somebody else to talk to because sometimes for some people it really is a mental thing they have to get past and I'm not a mental health therapist but I know like really great mental health therapists that can get you on the right direction. So a life coach tell people how to live daily life? Just give more so encouragement, motivation, instruction. And give me an example of what you mean. So for example if you came to me and you said you know what I really 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 want to figure out how to have better communication with people. I can talk to you about how to have better communication with oh, people, how to be more patient, how to use better words, like not to use like and maker and just use words like people that like to have sex with 
other people. Here's the thing, brother, young brother, um, Lamar. You can't teach George, um, Jesse Peterson how to be a better communicator when you yourself are not that great of a communicator when it comes to the fact that when you're asked a question and you know exactly what's being asked of you, but you choose to lie to get around it. Um, and you don't want, that's not good communication. I don't know who taught you that, but it's not. And that's my problem too. How come y'all keep on hiring and hiring any damn body to be your life coach? Stop that. Why are you hiring someone to be your life coach when their life is not all together? It makes absolutely no sense. How can you find me love? You can't even find yourself love. I want to be, I want to have my own family. How can you help me with that? If you never experienced it yourself. That's I'm, I'm serious about that. You cannot coach my life. If you can't coach your own. Yeah. You're successful and you're happy. So to speak. What you're, what you're not, because when you're a lie about your own situation and what you're doing, if you're a grown person, you have absolutely no reason to lie to anybody. You, mm -mm, because what, what you eat don't make me poop and vice versa. So I don't have to be concerned about you judging me. But when you start lying like this gentleman is, why, and then you understand that this, he's, he's coaching people? How in the hell is he coaching people? That's the, that's the thing. And then he takes a jab at Jesse Lee Peterson. It's like, like if you came to me and you want to learn how to communicate better, that's him saying that you don't communicate well. And then he says, because you use words and terms that are offensive because I don't communicate that way. That's, that's not communicating better. You're going to teach him to communicate like you. Sometimes you got to lie. Sometimes you got to water it down. You don't want to offend anyone. That's what you don't want to do. So go around the barn to not offend. I don't want anybody coaching me like that. Not at all, man. Oh, really? Yeah. But if I did that, I wouldn't be myself. Mm. I would be what you taught me to be. Exactly. No, I'm more exactly. so guiding you on a better way to correspond and talk to people, so not changing who you are. Do you have a life coach as well? I have a therapist. You do? Mm -hmm. And does that therapist teach you how to live life? They give me great insight um, on emotion and feelings. And, you know, uh, they don't dictate what I should do, but they give great insight on how to handle situations better. And are you an emotional person? Uh, no, I don't think so. Extremely. Uh, person, extremely. Okay. What do you extremely. think of online dating? Do you support that? Absolutely. Uh, but it's like, you know, I, I deal with some guys and they go online dating, right? Mm -hmm. That dude extremely like emotional. More than a woman online. It ain't like no order, ain't no shipping and handling included. But you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you go online and you go down this list like you ordered a meal, right? And you order, oh, I like this meal. Isn't online dating like yeah. ordering a woman online? Yeah. Online dating allows you to filter through the dating process without sometimes the headache of investing in meeting people and then figuring out they, you guys don't have anything in common. With online dating, you have the, the option to really like narrow your search down. So I don't know if you're on any, are you on any dating apps? No. So they have dating apps. I would never do that. So they have dating apps for people that want to do that, like Tinder. And you can open up your Tinder and say, you know what, I only want to date maybe people that uh, uh, love the movie Love and Basketball. I only want to date people that are, you know, between the heights of like 5'9 and 5'11. You can narrow your searches down. Or something more specific, you know, I only want to date somebody that's an entrepreneur or creative. So it allows you to have find common interest in people without having to kind of dig through the dating pool in like a physical aspect. Man, things have changed. Let me ask. Um, Come on, Jesse, take it to him, man. Take it to him. Would you hook up drag queens too? If they looking for, if they're looking for love, absolutely. Have you ever done that? No, I haven't. Mm -mm. And why not? They, I haven't had one yet, but if I, I would be very open to it. So if a drag queen walked in and said, hey, Jay Lamar, I'm looking for another drag queen, mm -hmm. you would find a drag queen? Yeah. <laughs> if RuPaul walked in and asked me to match him up, I would. With another drag queen? With whoever RuPaul wanted to be with. Really? Yes. Did you just now mispronoun um, um, misgender uh, uh, RuPaul? <laughs> Is there anything you wouldn't do other than find me a Mm -hmm. Is there anything you wouldn't do? Yeah, there are things that I wouldn't do, you know? Like, I would, I'm not going to find you a I'm not a madame. I'm not a, per, a pimp. 
or anything like that. So <laughs> I wouldn't do those so things. If, if someone walked into your office, so you do discriminate then, right? Because there's something you would not fire for other people. I don't think it's discrimination. I think it's just making a choice not to deal with something like that. But that's discrimination. That's definitely discrimination because you're, you'll choose to, because some people won't deal with drag queens at all, especially um, people who are deep into their Christian, um, their Christian journey, their Christian walk. They're going to say no, no, uh-uh. Um, but I can refer you to Lamar. He'll do it. You know what I mean? So you are. You, you just feel attacked. When you think of um, salacious people being attacked by the words, and you immediately cons um, started considering not only yourself, but many of your other friends and, um, and, and, and people that you know who would be offended by that because you know that they are free and loose with doing whatever they want to do sexually to whomever they want to do whenever they want to do it. So yeah, you're not in a relationship, but you yourself very well may be a based off of Jesse Lee Peterson's um, definition and you feel offended. So now you're saying I'll do anything, I'll match anybody but that. I don't think because if you don't discriminate, you have no you wouldn't make that decision at all. I think you just give the person what they want. No. Our business is about finding love. So if you But to them that might be love. I don't think that that's defined as love. To them, it might not. Oh, then, then it may, we maybe need to sit down and have a coaching session. Like maybe I wish I would have met you when you were in your, your 20 and 20s and 30s when you were making. Yeah. I would have had a conversation with you about, okay, well, let's cut down on the making <laughs> and figure out what's wrong. What, <laughs> what I, what I want to ask you today is, mm -hmm. um, what is the purpose of getting married, dating and getting married? Mm -hmm. In 2021, the purpose of getting married and dating money. is to build legacy and, and build, you know, a family and it's happiness about money. for yourself. For some people, um, family and happiness doesn't include marriage and children, um, but for other people it does. So it's all about, you know, a personal preference. Some people just want a life partner. They're at that age where they don't want to get married. Maybe they've been married once or twice before, and they just want a life partner to spend time with. Other people, you know, such as myself, want to invest in one person for the rest of my life. Oh, so marriage is a huge investment. Eternal, I mean, a, a commitment with somebody for the rest of my life is a huge investment. In, my, in the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, the purpose they of marriage. Still, boys are still boys and men are still men. And, and men got married mm -hmm. and, and they were to start a family. Mm -hmm. And so now you're saying in today's day. Gay people don't want to hear about that. Um, like when you start to talk like this, Jesse, this right here is what pisses gay people off because they consider the, the family that they believe to be family, um, uh, a new addition of it. And I mean, we know, we all know that it's happening all this because some people can't have kids. And so if it's a heterosexual relationship or marriage, the, you know, adopting and going out there, getting kids is a good thing. So, when you start talking about starting a family, you know, he's going to get pissed off, obviously, because, you know, it's, you're, you're talking about something that's very, that makes him extremely emotional. He said he not, he's not emotional, but this is when the emotion will, will have comes out because he feels attacked and he wants to feel right, no doubt. It is to fulfill a loneliness or something or something that's missing? I don't think it's to fulfill a loneliness. I think it's just to achieve something that you want to achieve. I want to achieve being a, a great father. That's what I want to achieve. You want a family. Yeah, absolutely. So that would be your reason for getting married. Other than that, mm -hmm. it is to fulfill something that's missing, right? I think that at a certain age, you look at... Don't know if y'all saw the information below the video, but Jesse Lee Peterson, he put... He wrote down at the bottom of his video, you know, he apologized for the audio. Apparently, the microphones are staticky at this point. And he apologized a couple of times in the video for it. Just, just want to bring that to your attention. Feel something that's missing, right? I think that at a certain age, you look at, you analyze life, and you figure out what would make me feel whole, what would make me feel great. And right. for some people, it is family. For some people, it is marriage. That light bulb clicks on for your people that you consider makers. 
at some age, a light bulb came on in your head and said, that isn't fulfilling me any longer. What's going to fulfill me? Maybe it's not having sex with somebody, or maybe it's finding one person to commit to and have sex with for the rest of my life. If someone told you, well, I want you to find me someone because I don't want a family. Mm -hmm. I just need someone with me to fulfill a void, a loneliness, or I don't want to be alone. Would you recommend a person not to get with anyone there? Well, I feel, like, I feel like you do have to put some sort of title on it. Do you just want a life partner? Then, yes, you can find a life. Well, I can help you find a life partner. Uh, Finding love is not the case. They just want a life partner. Which is it? That's not always the same like they just look i'm lonely and I, and I just want somebody to live with that's not the same as finding love so that's another misleading you know what i don't understand option. two guys cannot have children right mm -hmm. or two women can't have children together why would they bother getting married because it's what they want to do and that's their business and they can't have children together it's been proven a man can have a baby no, you can't have a baby. They can have children. Oh. They can adopt. Surrogacy. There's several options. Do you not watch TV? But that wouldn't be them doing it. It would be they would be going outside of their homosexuality to have a baby, right? To get a baby. If God had wanted them to have get married and have children, would He, he have made it so that they could do it together without? having to go outside of their homosexuality? You know what? I'm not comfortable having these type of religious conversations at all. Why not? You're a uh, Christian. And I love the Lord, but I won't be demeaned in any type of way when it comes to my spirituality or the spirituality of anybody within the LGBTQ community. You don't have a right to judge them. I don't have a right to judge them. It makes me no difference at all who they choose to love. They're great people. I'm a great person. You may be a great person underneath it all. So people are allowed to love and, and honor and take care of what they want. If they want to marry somebody and have children by somebody or with somebody, they can do that. And God will still love them. If you can't see it, that's completely fine and perfect on your behalf. But you are not the creator. You, do, you are not the end all to be all. There is, a, there is not a heaven or hell that you can put anybody in. But so you feel offended with the question? It's just a conversation and a demeanor as though it's something negative or something bad, and it's not. It, does it feel like it's something negative by me asking these things? By you say, the way you're saying it is like making it like a negative thing, and it's not a negative thing. If you believe that, that's fine, but you don't have to address it in such a negative way. So my belief that two guys cannot have a child is, is it a false belief? But you're saying for them to go outside of their sexuality, right. they're still inside their sexuality. They're just going to have, they're just, bring, they're just having a child. Um, the thing is, oh my gosh, here's the thing. Um, and, and I don't even know the daggone Bible verse, and we're going to continue. It's only a little bit more, but I don't even know the Bible verse, and I'm not going to talk for a long time. Um, but you're not supposed to waste your seed. The point of your seed is to grow a family. That's the point of your seed is to grow a family. So even if you're just getting the toilet pregnant and you're, or you're, you're getting socks pregnant or napkins, doing it yourself. Um, that's the whole point of your seed that you create. So if you are using that for anything else other than the purpose of growing and starting a family, then that is frowned upon. And, and this is the Bible. Now, what we like to do, though, and what we're taught by other pastors and preachers, and, and, and because everybody read the Bible their own way, and when they decide how, how, um, what they feel about life or how they feel about life based off of their own experiences or experiences of other people that they know and love, they will start to teach that those were those times. Times have changed. This is 2020. Well, like this gentleman keep on saying, this is 2021. Times have changed. It's not those old times anymore. So we need to adjust. You know, I mean, we need to adjust the dag on the teachings and understand that even if we are different from those times, God still loves us regardless. So we have free will to do whatever we want. But as long as we acknowledge that God is our God, and he is our father, then we can continue to live the life that we want to live. So what you're saying to me is super disrespectful to me and everyone that I know and love 
who's in this community. So that's whenever you have this conversation right here. That's why a lot of times, man, I don't have conversations about um, about faith and politics with people because it gets real sticky, man. It gets real, like real shady, real dangerous. It, it can go places. That you, you know, but they have to step outside of that. God didn't make that possible. So why would God have made that possible? So let me if ask he you meant something. For them to get married and all that as a man and as a Christian, why would God have not made that possible for two women or two men not to have to step outside of their homosexuality or les lesbian to have babies? Why would he make it possible for them to stay in that and have a child, have a child or children? People can have children, gay, straight, whoever. They but they to, can't have it. They, they have to have step children. outside to get it. They can have children. But my question is, why wouldn't God have made that possible? Are you leaving? I am leaving. This Don't is, go. This is an inappropriate conversation. Don't run. And I'm not going to have it. I'm not running. What the? This is an inappropriate conversation. My guest is leaving. I thought we were having fun. <laughs> he always say the same thing. My guest is leaving. I, th I thought we was having a good time. Like, what? what's going on? I don't get it. We were, we were having a really good conversation. <laughs> but you're the matchmaker, man. The executive matchmaker. I, am, but I see why you're alone. God bless you. All right, thank you. Amazing. He said, I see why you're alone. God bless you. And then he said, uh, Jesse Lee Pisa said, well, thank you. Amazing. And there you have it. It's amazing. He knew what was about to happen, but, you know, he had to have the conversation, man. And, and here's the thing. Y'all seen his dad going. Y'all seen his conversations with people. Why even come on his show if you know what's about to happen? You know what's about to happen. You're like, nah, I'm about to hold my own. I'm about to do my thing. I already seen his conversation with this person, that person, the other. But I ain't down. Oh, he about to learn something talking to me. You know what? I'm leaving. This 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 conversation is inappropriate. It's inappropriate. I, I gotta go. I see why you're alone. God bless you. <laughs> All right. So what y'all thought, man? Let me know in the comments below. If you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video and hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing per usual, man. Love y'all.